Hey, hello everybody and welcome to the next step in your ANSYS Fluid experience. At this point you should have a mesh that's up and running without any issues. And now we'll be able to begin with our flow solution. So from, once you get back to the workbench, what you're going to do is go into setup. Uh, okay, all this should be good. You can leave it on double precision. This is just how uh, precise the computer runs, uh, how many bits it uses. And we'll leave it on this on serial for now. If you're using the supercomputer, you can also use parallel, which will, uh, as you learn there, to change how the solution is calculated in the computer. So it's bringing in our mesh now. Okay, it brings it in as this block if you want to see what you're looking at more clearly. You can change your, you can just change your view here. Uh, meshing seems to be, work the best for me. It just shows the uh, object that's been meshed. So the first thing you want to do when you get into the setup is click this check button. It runs through your mesh and ensures there won't be any major issues. Uh, as long, if you get checking mesh done without any errors, that's a good sign. Uh, if an error does appear, it'll pop up down in this console area down here. The next thing you can do is check the scale. Uh, I had this set up. It's about 5 meters in the X direction, 5 in the Y, and an, almost a little over 10 in the Z, uh, just because of the wide ring span of this design. Uh, you just want to make sure your enclosure is in there uh, based on what you chose earlier. So the first and one of the most important steps is to pick your models. In this case, I have uh, viscous uh, spoiler or Mars equation selected. But if we double click here, we can see some more of our options. Uh, we can go in viscid and get an Euler solution, laminar and get a simple laminar no turbulence solution. And then the remaining are all different turbulence models. Uh, spoiler or Mars is a one equation model. which is typically good enough for what we're going to be doing in capstone or in other aero classes. But if you want to go uh, more computationally intensive, longer solution, potentially more accurate, though, you can go to the next equations, uh, the two equation models. This four equation model is designed for uh, supersonic and transonic flight. Uh, so if you're looking into that, that might be a model you want to pick. And then there's also these detached eddy and large eddy simulation, uh, which you guys have learned about or will learn about. And that's going to be even more computationally intensive and try to capture more of the eddies that are developing. Once you choose a model, you can change the constants over here. They have the standard values in as defaults though, so you no normally won't touch those. Next step is to select, select the materials. This will allow you to change your Reynolds number potentially, or if you're doing something that's going to result in strain, uh, then the solid would be important. So the first thing we'll open up is the fluid. I have it in metric units right now, but it's standard air. So if you're running the, something in a water tunnel and you want to compare the results, you could change it here. Uh, but typically you'll leave it as air and just run it at the mission velocity to get both the Reynolds and Mach number uh, as close as possible to what you'll see in real life. And then you can also change the solid components if you're computing the strain or anything as well. Uh, you typically won't be doing that though. Next step, next thing in the line is cell zone conditions. So here you're just making sure that your uh, fluid is the fluid you selected. So enclosure means what's inside the box and you want that to be air. And then here we have our solid and it is our solid. Boundary conditions are also important. So you want to make sure you have a velocity inlet as your inlet. Uh, you can edit it to choose the speed. Right now I have it set for 200 meters per second, but it can be whatever you want. If it's going higher, you're going to probably want to use one of the uh, higher order models that handle transonic things. But to, this should be able to handle 200 meters per second. Uh, the rest of these 
you want to make sure the walls are walls. So if we just go to wall, I want to make sure it's a no slip wall, stationary, no slip. Some of these other things are just artifacts of my meshing. I had some issues with it, but uh, they all worked out to be walls, so that's where they are. Mesh interfaces is just where the mesh is transiting over the solid, so that's a contact region here. You don't have to change anything in here. Dynamic mesh we don't have. This would be something if you had a uh, propeller or fan blades running. Uh, it's more advanced than what we'll usually be doing, but it, ANSYS is capable of doing it. Uh, here's just our reference values, which will be used in solution plots and reports if we choose to. Solution methods. Uh, this is just uh, what's set. Uh, you usually won't change these either. The defaults are there. This is for how the computer is going to solve everything. Solution controls are similar. Monitors. Uh, you, you can look at your residuals for each different type of model. You're going to have different residuals in this SA model. We have continuity, the three velocity directions, and then a new term. You can change these. This determines how the computer knows when the solutions converge enough for you. So the default is one to the negative third, which is good enough for what we're doing today. But if you need a more exact solution or a more precise solution, you can make those numbers smaller. Then going down to initialization, this gives our uh, the computer just a starting point to calculate the rest of the equa uh, the problem. So you just put in uh, x velocity, and then the computer will go from there and iterate out until the mo it converges. So just hit initialize. Taking a second here. So it's been initialized. Next thing to do is go to run calculation. Uh, I put in a thousand iterations here. It will converge. I ran this earlier around 120, but uh, whatever iterations you put in is the maximum number. So if it won't converge by that point, it just stops there. If it does converge, it stops and tells you the solution has converged, and it won't do any further iterations, and you can just go to the solution from there. Uh, in this case, even with only 120 iterations, it still took about 20 minutes just due to the model complexity. With the more complex models, it'll take even longer. And with the less complex models, like the uh, Euler or laminar flow, it's much, much quicker. So I'm going to hit Calculate here. Just to show you what happens. Takes a minute to get started. Uh, running this earlier, each of these iterations took about six or seven seconds. And as I said, it went through 120, which added up to about 20 minutes. So what shows up while you're running the calculation is the residuals. So as you can see here, uh, started our x and y velocity pretty low. But as it runs, they vary until they until everything starts to converge, and then it'll run until it gets to your convergence point. I'm not going to go force you all to watch this all the way through. So you can see in the next video, we'll cover how to check the solution and then post-processing of the solution. So thank you all for watching.